Hi all. Uh, uh, I, I am uh, here to introduce you to our Nordic product, Global Peak Resources and Market Assessment, which is brought out as uh, the UFRO World Series publication, Volume 44. Now, uh, well, what, what's uh, so important about tea? You see, uh, tea is one of the most uh, important uh, tropical hardwood species, which uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, challenges the other hardwood species in the premium market. Now, uh, if we look at uh, the natural distribution of tea, it is uh, naturally distributed only in four countries, India, Myanmar, Laos, India, and Thailand. But uh, due to its uh, uh, high potential as a uh, high timber species, now it is cultivated in nearly 80 countries across the globe. So uh, realizing uh, the uh, potential of uh, uh, the steak as a very valuable timber species, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations established the teak net as back as 1995. And uh, at present, it is headquartered at Kerala Forest Research Institute. So, uh, it's an international information network which caters to the different aspects of tea. And uh, it, it regularly conducts uh, like uh, exhibitions, trainings, and uh, major events like uh, uh, the World Tea Conferences. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, recent World Tea Conference that took place was in uh, Ghana in 2022, wherein it was felt that uh, there, there, there has been no comprehensive assessment on the uh, tea resources and markets. So uh, basically, uh, this, this was the uh, motivation which, uh, uh, which, which, which enabled us to take up this work with the support of UFRO and uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Now, uh, how it was done? It was actually, as, as I have said, uh, now tea is cultivated in nearly 80 countries, which is spread across Africa, the South Asia and Southeast Asia, Oceania, then uh, the Central uh, and uh, South Americas. So uh, it's a huge, uh, huge uh, spread across the world. and. Uh, to have a very comprehensive assessment, what we had to do is like, we had to identify first five regional coordinators for five different regions who will be able to contact uh, the country focal points or the persons who are in charge of official records who can give us the data. So uh, it, was, it was the first challenge that we had to, uh, we had to tackle with. Then, uh, 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 as you know that uh, all these regions uh, Though uh, uh, English is a common language, there was uh, there are some uh, language uh, uh, what you call interpretation difficulties. So the questionnaires were def uh, were derived in five different languages, like uh, Chinese, Spanish, then uh, Portuguese, French, and uh, of course English. And uh, all of these countries were contacted. Uh, for collecting the data. For this, we had to utilize uh, the collaborative networks and uh, also the modern tools that uh, we had been developed over the past 25 uh, to 27 years in TeamNet. Now, uh, uh, once the data started pouring in, there, there was, of course, uh, a huge amount of data that was coming into the, uh, 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 into, the uh, into our common pool. So it had to be uh, uh, subjected to a plausibility check. We had to check whether the data is agreeing with the normal trends. And uh, when, whenever some error was found, we, we had a mechanism to review it, get back to our collaborators, then re-verify it, and uh, so that the maximum, uh, 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 what you call the quality of the data, has to be assured when uh, when we are putting when when we are bringing out a, uh, a product of this sort. Then uh, of the 80 countries that we had contacted, we, we could get response from nearly 72 countries. And uh, it was only 72 countries said that, okay, we are happy, which uh, is still maintained on a commercial scale. And of these, only 52% sent back the questionnaire that we had, uh, we had given to them. So for the remaining, what we did was we had to depend on the gray literature or uh, desktop studies so that we had extracted the data and used that to uh, have this global assessment. Now, uh, if we have a brief uh, look on the, what, what were the outcomes, we can see that uh, the area of natural and planted tea has increased over the years. And uh, what, what was the increase? We did an analysis from 2010 to 2022, what has happened. We, we found that the area of the natural forest 
has uh, increased by something around 2 million hectares. That is, at present, the area is uh, uh, 30 million hectares. Uh, in 2010, it was something around uh, uh, 2 million hectares. This is this is increasingly because uh, there has been a lot of uh, conservation activities going on in protecting the natural forest in the four countries, India, Myanmar, Laopedia, and uh, Thailand. So, uh, ban, uh, the, there is a complete ban on logging from the natural forest and mostly the market now depends on the uh, planted forest. Uh, accordingly, the planted forest also, when we when we look at the data on the planted, planted forest, we found that there was an increase of something around 0.5 million hectares. That is, uh, now at present, the area is something uh, around 2 million hectares. If uh, we looked at a country-wise analysis, we found that 97% uh, of the natural and planted forest uh, at present is uh, uh, in uh, what you call in Asia. It is distributed in Asia. The other heavyweights are Africa and South America. Now, uh, when we looked at the markets and trade, some interesting trends came. Um, it is uh, traded in two forms. Major, majorly traded in two forms. One is uh, the round wood and uh, the other one is the sawn timber. So, uh, if we look at the uh, trade in round timber, it was found that 97% of whatever is produced worldwide is absorbed by the Indian market. So, wherever teak is produced, 97% gets imported to India. And the remaining 3%, 2.5% nearly goes to China and 0.5% to Vietnam. So, if we look at the scenario of round wood in teak, uh, India is the major market. And whatever is absorbed, uh, whatever is brought to India is absorbed domestically. That is the domestic market of India uses 97% of the tea produced worldwide. Then uh, uh, as for China and Vietnam, basically they uh, uh, they act as something like a processing hub. They produce, uh, they convert it into new products and export it into uh, different markets, Middle East and uh, the European market. Then uh, uh, for the sawn timber, now, uh, most of the tea producing countries are having uh, uh, laws which actually encourage the export of sawn timber because uh, it is like uh, generating local employment in their respective countries. Uh, instead of uh, uh, exporting uh, the round timber, they are now increasingly going towards the sawn timber. So, uh, sawn timber is uh, being uh, uh, exported throughout the world and some important uh, interesting facts came into uh, uh, came from this study that is two emerging uh, tea processors of sawn timber are singapore and netherlands which do not have any planted or natural forest the uh, uh, two sawn timber processing hubs are one is in netherlands and the other one is singapore that was an interesting fact that came uh, through this study now uh, Traditionally, and when we when we did that perspective analysis, we found that traditionally what what has been happening is like a teak was uh, looked upon as only for its timber and livelihood options. But now there is an increasing uh, increasing awareness that people think that okay, it's not just the timber, but it has other multiple values. Uh, like uh, for example, when uh, teak plantations are there, the plant plantations of course in uh, Asia and uh, some areas of uh, South America, we have long rotation, 50, 60 plantations. But majority of the commercial plantations, say, have short rotations like 20 to 30 years. But even 20 to 30 years is a good uh, time period. What uh, the uh, uh, people perceive it is uh, like uh, this sort of plantations having 20 to 30 year rotations have uh, put less pressure on the natural forest. That is, the natural forest can be kept aside for conservation or ecological or environmental aspects, whereas the other needs of the local community can be met from these plantations. So that was an interesting uh, perspective that came out of uh, this particular uh, this thing. So, and uh, we tried to look at because at the uh, carbon sequestration potential of these plantations, because these are 20 to 30 year uh, old minimum rotation plantations. What is the carbon sequestration potential of these plantations? So what we found out uh, that we didn't go into the natural forest, we just looked at into the planted forest of uh, something around 5 million hectares of plantations that could uh, store something around uh, 22 million tons of carbon dioxide. That is another... Uh, aspect which can be factored into the uh, plantation management because uh, uh, there are emerging carbon market scenarios, though it is very difficult to tap, I know, but still uh, the, the estimations are there 
And uh, once this potential gets uh, uh, into into what you call a, is more available because more available, people can tap into this resource as well. Uh, so uh, this uh, 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 this output, which uh, was brought out uh, by uh, nearly six months of intensive study, including uh, five regional coordinators and hundreds of contributors from 80 different countries. Uh, 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 we, we are proud to launch uh, uh, this uh, publication uh, before this August audience. So, uh, thank you. The hard copy of uh, this publication will be available at the, the uh, UFRO SPDC uh, booth, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, here in the exhibition store. And uh, a detailed, uh, uh, detailed presentation of the results of this particular uh, uh, study would also be made in our side event, which is going to take place uh, on 28 June uh, in the room K21. So uh, thank you. Thank you all.